my alocasia collection! Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rose. And in today's video, I'm going to show you all of my alocasias, which I love. I thought I had quite a lot of alocasia actually, but putting them all here, I actually noticed there's only about eight, which is not a lot maybe, but they are really, really stunning. The ones I do have, some of them are definitely my favorite plants, like the ones back here. I actually have gotten a lot of questions about these. How do you care for them? How do you keep them happy, basically? <laughs> Until recently, I actually thought that these were just very easy plants. I care for them just like I do my other plants. I didn't really see why they were doing so well in my care and not so much necessarily in other people's houses. But I found something out recently, very important information if you want to grow alocasias, and that is how important light is. I often look at Daryl's Instagram houseplant journal. He seems to be a little bit nerdy about light, which I absolutely love. And he's been sharing Q and A's where people ask him, what kind of light does this one need or this one? And I noticed something very, very interesting that I had never seen before or heard before. Generally, all the plants that he mentioned, he gives a suggested measurement of light. It doesn't matter if you know what that is or not. He uses foot candles, which I have in a little measuring thingy as well. I talk about this in another video. I don't remember which one, but if I do, I will try and link it here. But what I noticed was that all of the other plants, he suggests a minimum of 200 foot candle, I think it was. And for an alocasia request, he said 1000 foot candles. So five times as much light as any other philodendron monstera whatever else he mentioned at that time in those stories. Don't pin me down on that exactly, I don't fully remember everything. But what stood out to me was that the alocasia light requirement was so much higher. And that actually made sense to me because I have a huge south-facing window with a big windowsill where usually my alocasias live. And I didn't think about that before, but that is just where I put them and where they were happy. And then actually this beautiful Zabrina that I have here, this variegated Zabrina, I had that away from the light a little bit, like maybe two or three meters away from the light and it wasn't doing anything until my sister-in-law said, hey, maybe it wants more light. She also loves plants. So I moved it into the windowsill and it immediately put out a new leaf. So that was definitely an experiment where I myself noticed that they love light. So if you're thinking about getting alocasia, definitely make sure that you have enough light for them. Not so much direct light, but bright indirect light, this magical thing. And that is what my window gives without me realizing it before. There are quite high buildings on the opposite side of the street, which usually until it's like high summer block most of the direct sunlight, but there is a lot of light. So that is ultimate conditions without me even realizing it. Something else about care, watering needs. I feel like they are quite different depending on the plant. For example, my Alocasia Friedeck or Michaeliziana Mexkowski actually wants a lot of water. It is a little bit more of a softer, thinner leaf. Compared to my dragon scale back here, that doesn't want that much water. You can actually notice that the soil doesn't dry out very quickly at all. And I did actually <laughs> let my um, Friedeck, whoops, <laughs> dry out way too much this last week. So all the leaves are hanging. I hope that it recovers. But that is kind of normal for alocasias. The leaves can really hang down a lot, which is kind of annoying. This one actually grows with a top, what do you call them? Like a, a window in the ceiling. So the leaves are pointing more upwards rather than out and down. So that is an option if you want your alocasias to stay a little bit more compact. Another option which I've done here is to use some kind of plant velcro to keep the plant a little bit more together. This looks a little bit ugly because I just did that today. That's definitely an option to keep the leaves a little bit more upright, but I definitely let them dry out quite a lot. And then I check the soil and then if it really does get quite dry, then I water them again with an extra eye on the fried egg because that dries out so quickly. One more thing is that alocasia plants are actually bulbs. So it is quite normal for the leaves to die off in fall if they are in a little bit more of a colder conditions or not so much light. All of the leaves can die off, but it will grow again in spring. So if your alocasia does that, don't worry, just leave it be, <laughs> make sure the bulb doesn't rot, but also doesn't dry out completely. I actually don't know the exact care 
for just a bulb. I haven't had any because mine keep their leaves so far. Fingers crossed that stays that way. And I have noticed that tiny ones, I have a lot of baby alocasias in here, are a lot more difficult to take care of than mature plants. Although I do have to say the first time that I killed all my babies, I had beautiful alocasia silver dragon and a black velvet and I killed them because I didn't know what pests were and when I did find out they had pests I treated them not very nicely <laughs> not very well either and now it's about a year and a half later and I know a lot more so one thing that people always say about alocasia is that they attract spider mites and that is definitely the case most of these plants have had spider mites especially I must say the fry deck has been an attractor of the bugs the other ones a little bit less, but it's kind of normal to expect some spider mites on your plants. I use predatory mites to fight them and that so far has worked very well. So I'm very happy to continue that and experiment with that. It also means that you don't have to treat the plant in any other way. You don't have to spray it or remove bugs. So it's kind of a lazy, expensive, but lazy option. Enough chatting, let's show you the plants. Let's start with this one. This one is a Alocasia New Guinea Gold that I got from a plant shop as a gift. I didn't really like it because it put out several leaves that were deformed, like they were tiny little not pretty leaves, but since then it has recovered. This was the first leaf it put out and then this one, the next one is looking normal as well. And this is actually a special plant because it is a variegated version of mycorrhizo mycorrhizo or something like a uh, regular alocasia that looks like this because this is green right now but this one can turn yellow whenever it wants to and be yellow variegated for a while from what i've read it can also then turn back to green so it's kind of a i do what i want and you'll just have to deal with it plant <laughs> so it's kind of weird and i don't really like it probably because of our not so good start together. So a friend of mine is actually taking this one over from me. He probably can give it a lot more better care and more love than I can. The mature petioles actually look purple and pink, which is beautiful. So yeah, that is the Alocasia New Guinea Gold. Next, let's go over here. This is my Alocasia Cupria. I saw this one in a video that I filmed, you can find that here, where I went into a Dutch grower and they had so many plants. It was really cool to see how automated the system here in the Netherlands is and it helps you to understand why prices can be quite low for these plants because literally everything is automated except the collecting of the plants for shipment to the sellers. So that was really, really cool to get a behind the scenes. This plant has grown a lot. It also had a bit of a struggle for a while because like I said, it had spider mites and a lot of the leaves came out like this. Very damaged and weird looking. It's actually also very dusty because it's in my kitchen. It probably gets some grease on there and then the dust just sticks to it. Here's another leaf that is a little bit damaged, but the newer ones all look beautiful and they have grown big again. I bought this one because it was so big in leaf size and that's returned so i'm really happy about that and it's putting out some new leaves so really happy about this one it still lives in the kitchen because of the spider mites from before but it seems to be happy there so i'm just gonna leave it there on this side we have my alocasia zebrina variegata although it's not very clearly variegated you can see it on this leaf a little bit better but it's kind of like yellow slash green variegated. It's grown so, so big. When I got it, I think it didn't even have this leaf yet. This is one that came out in my care as well. So all the leaves were smaller than this one. And now we've got leaves like that. So it's really, really grown a lot. And what I love about it is that my boyfriend actually likes this plant. So. He is happy to have this in the middle of the living room in this beautiful pot that his dad made for us. And I just think it looks very cool. Overall, the Zebrina has been a really, really easy plant for me to grow. And it's one that a lot of people comment on because they love the stems. And that's good news because I can tell them you can easily get this if you don't get the variegated version. You get it for like 20 euros in a shop here and you can get a really big one already. So for all my beginner plant neighbors and friends, <laughs> this is a really good suggestion. At the bottom here, I've popped in all of my alocasia babies and one dishidia. 
because I wanted to make the pot look a little bit nicer so you don't just look at soil. So if we look in here, look a little bit closer. There are four alocasias in here, two of the same kind and two other ones. This is the alocasia black velvet. It looks a little bit crappy because it also had spider mites, obviously. I used to love these leaves, especially when they come out. They do look very, very beautiful. But since then, I kind of find them a little bit boring. I don't know what happened. They are velvet and shiny, which is cool. But I don't like them as much as my other alocasias anymore. So yeah, I don't know what happened there. Here is a alocasia cupria baby that I took off the mother plant. Here is the other leaf. Super nice and red and shiny. Very cool. And this is the new one. So that is quite happy. I gave a lot of those to my friends, so I hope that my alocasias have spread across the Netherlands. And then let's see, on the back here we've got a silver dragon that's also looking quite bad. But don't worry, I have predatory bugs in here, so the bugs that you see are probably good bugs. Or if they are bad bugs, they will be eaten very soon. This one, I don't know what happened, it looks a little bit shit. Excuse me. It looks a little bit bad. It seems like... That same kind of thing that happened to another plant that I will show you in a moment. But overall, it does get a little bit bigger in size now, so that is nice because I love the look of a mature silver dragon. On this side, we've got my other silver dragon that looks a lot better, actually. Just turning the pot so you can see better. I got this maybe with one or two tiny, tiny leaves and it's grown two more since. Here is one. Here is another. You can't even see really the colors on the screen at least. I hope it comes across on my computer. But the silver is very, very cool. This one is very happy. I just decided to like spread my chances of growing these properly again because I really want to get them back into a really big size like I used to have. But that has not happened yet. All right, two more to go. So in the back here, I've got my favorite pot of alocasias which is now not looking super happy, but that's okay. So this is my fried egg, which is actually named, like I said before, a Michaelitiana Maxkowski. And then we've got the variegated version, which is named Alocasia Michaelitiana fried egg. And that is the actual fried egg. I'm definitely hoping to get that at one point, but I'm also really happy with just this green one with the super velvet leaves and the light veining. It looks so stunning. It's growing really fast for me as well. I can't even tell you anymore which leaves it got in my care because I think they were tiny and all of them have grown really big now. So that's really cool. It's quite a fast grower, I feel like. And then the other one next to it is my dragon scale, which oh, it's so beautiful. I love this plant so much. It has one really good looking leaf right here. And then there is one that is just opening right now so it doesn't have a very clear pattern just yet they come out a little bit more like greenish and then they slowly start to turn more gray or even black almost like this one over here let me just show you the other side of that plant to give you the full version <laughs> these leaves are all looking horrible i don't know exactly what happened with these some of them got some sunburn others just have insane amounts of browning on them like this that's super ugly but that's part of keeping plants, I think, and learning. So don't just think that I have all perfect leaves in here. A lot of them look shit, look really bad, and that's okay, that's normal. So you have some expectations for your alocasias. You can be nice to them even though they look a little bit odd or wonky. The dragon scales are actually quite easily available here in the Netherlands because they are grown here in, I don't know if it's tissue culture or just really big growers but they are very affordable here. Compared to other alocasias who are very affordable in the US, for example, the Aslani that was on my wish list last year, which you can check here, that one is very, very hard to get here and probably comes out of, how do you say, stealing from nature, poaching. <laughs> but in the US, it is actually tissue cultured. So there it's probably much more affordable and easy to find, while the dragon scales over there are like two or three hundred dollars. So there is always some interesting differences between countries and areas in the world, 
depending on what plants are locally grown there. So remember that if you are looking for a dragon scale and you're in the US, it's probably going to be very expensive. If you're in Europe, you're going to probably find it quite easily. And I guess that's it for this Alocasia <laughs> collection tour. I really hope you enjoyed it. I know not a lot of people are big fans of Alocasias. Might have to do with that light requirement that I talked about in the beginning of the video. So please let me know in the comments. Do you like Alocasias? Do you have any? Are they doing well for you? Let me know. I'm definitely a big Alocasia fan. Please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. That really, really helps me. Look at that. The sun is shining on my leaf right there. <laughs> that means it's time to go because it's going to hit my head very soon. Thank you so much, so much to my patrons and my YouTube members. I love you guys. I'm so happy you're supporting me. And if you want to join, click the links in the description below or just the join thingy. And we'll have monthly Zoom calls together so you can ask me all your questions and we can get to know each other a little bit better, which I personally really enjoy. If you want to learn to do yoga and feel a little bit more fit and flexible in your body, check out my live yoga classes, which I'm teaching again since January. You can find all the information on my website, yogawithrose.com or on my Instagram, yogawithrose. And I will see you in the next There is the Sun. <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. I will see you in the next one. Take care of yourself. Sending you so much love and sunshine. Oh! For those of you who don't know, the Netherlands does not get a lot of sunshine. So if it comes, we enjoy it. Plants enjoying it also. You know what time it is. It is time for our bloopers because I did a lot in this video. That was not right. Let's cut it all together and put it in here. Oh my god! Oh my man just says love. Sorry, my legs are falling asleep. <sighs> Why did I sit like this? Because I wanted my face to be in the center of the shot. But then I have to kind of like squat the whole time. Maybe I'll do a little yoga pose. Ha. Huh. One more thing. <sighs> My feet. This is really horrible. Why did I film like this? <laughs> so are you guys. So can you still see my head when I'm like this? Probably not, but it's much more comfortable. I'm going to be here for a moment. <laughs> One more thing is the, what is it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so this, oh my knees, oh my god, this video. Blah, 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 knip, knip, knip. Oh. Anything else I need to say? To. Can you please stop? <laughs>